top of the day, top of the day. Been a long time. So putting the eye back on the ball, these divisions, these distractions, uh, especially the left-right and the Black Lives Matter, um, still with the mask a little bit, but I think people are starting to understand that it's not quite so straightforward as they think it is. And people are starting to understand that what the news is telling us is a crock of shit, but a little bit, you know, people are starting to realize that a little bit while the news is full of shit a lot. And that would be in part because in 2018, no, I'm sorry, 2013, the law was stricken from the uh, book that made it illegal for news to intentionally mislead. Um, basically, it used to be, propaganda used to be illegal, to put it very basically, um, because that law was in place as an anti-propaganda anti law. So that's out of, uh, it's been out of the books, so things changed since 2013 and it's been exploited plus we've got the whole everything's turned to clickbait so instant uh, you know the, the news stations need instant they need to make their audience instantly happy with what they're reviewing instead of the news making news they make whatever their established audience whatever their established audience already is they make news that agrees with what they already think. So constantly the news is trying to figure out exactly what their um, viewers want. And then they get news to fit that so that they don't go away. They'll click on every story. It's, the, it's what's driving the divide um, in a massive way. It's the model, it's the business model of news that's got such a huge role in in the divisive content. You know, it, you won't find a Fox News viewer and a MSNBC viewer seeing things the same way at all because those stations are just reflecting what their pre-established viewers want. <laughs> so, that's a big problem. So then, you have the viewers deciding what content they want. And when people are in fear, they pay extra special in, uh, attention to whatever it is that is making them afraid. So what they'll see from, say, MSNBC, their viewers have been very afraid of COVID. So they see that over and over, their viewers are clicking, clicking on the COVID stories. So what do they need to do? More COVID stories. So you have COVID day and night. Um, that serves what the uh, NIH, or I should say Dr. Fauci and Bill Gates and all that, that serves all them quite well. So they do it because that's what people want to hear. And this is the strangest thing about that is people want to hear that it's really bad. That's what they're most interested in. In fact, if you tell anybody who views those stations that things are not as bad as they say, you'll get an argument about it saying, oh yes, they're way worse actually, you know. It's like, but if you click on Fox News where they take the opposite stance, a lot of them just because it's the opposite stance, they'll tell you the opposite on almost any issue. So who's telling the truth? Nobody. There's no, there's no incentive for anybody to tell the truth. Nobody. Um, their only incentive is if you can prove it wrong and make them look like assholes like they are than they do and so they try to avoid anything that instantly makes them look like fools other than that it's business they do whatever gets the most clicks um and whatever benefits uncle scam they really have last say they can really change the narrative in fact especially on social media where they censor 
anything that doesn't agree with the WHO or the NIH, um, the narrative. If it doesn't agree, then it gets censored. If it's not already established to be a, a story that the mainstream hasn't covered, they demonetize it. Once it becomes well known, then they won't demonetize it if you make a story on the same thing that the news already made a story on. Great for independent journalism. Um, and there's, you know, they're constantly uh, going off about misinformation. Um, it's just like the constant theme, and this has been going on since before COVID, because Bill Gates was talking about it at the event 201 where they were planning for a pandemic in October before it started so like two two months or one month before the virus uh was known of coincidence oh it also was in Wuhan, china uh, wuhan china i'm sorry yeah seriously put on by bill gates uh, and uh, uh johns hopkins university along with a bunch of other um foundation type uh investors in investors in this uh, pandemic. So, if anybody is talking a lot about this stuff, they get censored a lot. At the very least, they get demonetized. And many of them are just getting straight up deplatformed, so they can't even they can't even use YouTube anymore for for doing videos. So, I'm going to start um, putting stuff on BitChute and maybe Rockfin, but but. Bit shoot, um, but any of those platforms, you know, once once they get a lot of corporate influence, and that corporate influence is trying to steer the net narrative, there's no guarantees that they're not going to censor just the same. So it's one of those jump from place to place. So I'm planning on um, updating the wonkysanga.com website because that's not as subject to censorship well not at all as it stands but who knows how the laws are going to change because what we're in the midst of is a full technocratic coup d'etat of, of our entire system um a technocracy but it's not slowly creeping in like it was you know it was kind of the totalitarian tiptoe where they're just taking a little taking a little now with this virus, they have kicked it into full gear. And with the contact tracing, you have no privacy or any, I mean, not even close to having privacy. It's way beyond Orwell, knowing every second where you are, who you're spending time with, how much time you spend with them, where you are, uh, just, I mean, there's, and they're also getting rid of cash slowly. So there's gonna be no, um, no transactions that they don't know about and can tie right into your timeline and just know everything about you when you eat what you eat you know what what room of the house you eat in because that's how accurate wi-fi is it'll show where you are in the house by triangulating with your neighbors not that i care what room of the house i'm eating in but they'll know what i bought how long i took sitting in one spot or you know i mean it's really who cares if they're listening to the words you say on the phone or your texts or have a camera on you? If they know where you are, who you're with every minute, that's worse. It's worse because they then something that they can't tell by, by text necessarily is how close are you with somebody? Like how much time do you spend with them? And also with the contact tracing, if you say are fairly social and you spend time with you know 20 people over the course of however long well chances are one of those 20 people has covid vax of uh, um, covid virus or coronavirus one in 20 have it so you have a one in 20 chance of spending time with that person and then what a contact tracer can come and quarantine you for that um if you even think about having a party of any kind, well, somebody there's gonna have it and everybody will be uh, quarantined, so nobody's gonna wanna go. So no more gatherings, right? Um, unless you're protesting, 
<laughs> I've been trying to call for protesters to unite because we're all the the left and right is phony, you know, and we all have the same oppressive regime coming down on all of us. If we can put some of the things that we don't like aside for the stuff that we can't tolerate, it's wise. And it's not something we should do over the course of time. This is this is happening right now. And every one of these laws with the map, these masks are not going anywhere. They're not. You know, it's like they, they found out that they can get us to wear them. And they're making laws now because they can. Once they get us to wear them all the time, which is now, um, it's not quite written into law here. They're not quite enforcing it here. Um, no, it is law here, but they haven't put it officially as a law. It's... I don't know what they call it, but because it's not constitutional, so they have to skirt around it. Um, it's some sort of emergency health measure. So, so we have these divisions fueled by media wanting you to click so that they know that you're clicking on a story that you want, so they create more of it. Because we're addicted to the fear. Um, so how does that end up? When things start to get better, which they have been, where are the stories about it getting better? You know, things are improving. No, nope, not a word about that. They might go silent a little bit as they're getting better, just because they don't want to do a story saying it's getting better. Nobody wants to hear that it's getting better. <laughs> So how are we ever supposed to get out of these situations if everybody remains in fear and it feeds the fear engine feedback loop? How are we still supposed to um, reconcile that? Uh, I don't have the ideal answer, but I think that it helps if everybody understands that that's what's going on. That's why they have more incentive to lie to your face and make it scary as long as somebody gives them the information that they can point at saying oh we got that from dr fauci who also benefits from that and you know bill gates as long as they feed what they say is the reality to the media stations then the media stations will report it happily if it's if it's scary <laughs> but they will kind of avoid it if it's good news i mean really when's the last time you heard good news even though things have been improving because things get opened back up. You just kind of look around after a while going, you know, I don't, things don't seem as scary. And then, you know, you got to get like dig and look for any kind of good news. And even then you don't find the good news. You find statistics and data saying that it's good news. And maybe, you know, you'll find a video of the governor saying, okay, well, we're opening certain businesses back up. But if you don't behave, <laughs> we're shutting them right back down. Fear, fear, fear. Well, this fear has got us wearing masks permanently, as far as I know. And what has happened with masks, now that it's been so regulated, or not regulated, regularly used, they're trying to pass laws about it, making it mandatory everywhere. Well, then where does it go away if there's never any good news? And you throw in that the largest corporation in the world owns 3M, who are making probably most of these masks. They got their talons in it. They don't want it to go away. This alternative economy that's popping up, this COVID economy, with the contact tracing and the masks and the vaccines and whatever else they decide is scary and that we have to whip into fear mode and comply with whatever the hell they say to do. And if everybody agrees on it out of fear, then everybody else has to live with the consequence. Anyway, I guess that's it for now. Take care.